wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Yes, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Come on, praise Him this morning. been bought with a price. He laid his life down for you. He purchased you with his blood. Amen. Amen. I am a child of the king. Amen. I am made right. I, he sees me as righteous because of what Jesus did. If I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Lord, we confess our sins this morning. Would you show us? Would you convict us? We confess this morning anything we've done, God, that displeased you. We are thankful for your forgiveness, and we lay it down at the cross this morning. We lay ourselves down at the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. With his heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring the sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring the sacrifice. I will bring a sacrifice. I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, hand on my heart, this much is true. I've no life apart from you. Lay me 
will be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say your will your way always it will be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say your will your way it will be my joy to say your will
the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, King Jesus. You're the name we're lifting high, your glory. Shaking of the earth and skies, revival. We want to see your kingdom here. We want to see your kingdom here, King Jesus. You're the name we're lifting high. Shaking up the earth and skies, revival. We want to see your kingdom here. We want to see your kingdom here. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down.
Lord, we came to glorify your name. We're here to worship you today, God, nothing else but you. All of our problems, all of our situations, everything that we face, God, we put them aside. We, we don't want to look at them no more today. This week, Father God, we've had enough, but Father God, we want to focus on the beautiful face of you today, God. That we come and we bask in your presence. Now, Father, I know that when you come into the presence of your people, God, that you come to do a work inside your people. Now, Father God, if there's been any sick here today, God, I pray, Lord, that you had touched their body <clears throat> in the name of Jesus. Heal them from the top of their head, God, to the very soles of their feet. Burn any imperfections out in the name of Jesus. Father God, if there's any here today that needs a financial breakthrough, God, Lord, you provide their need because your word said Lord that you never seemed a righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread now Father in the name of Jesus I pray God a body blessing upon your people that you would bless them beyond measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give unto their bosom that's your word God we stand on your word today we stand on the fact that you are God and you're all God all by, by yourself. You don't need Muhammad. You don't need Buddha. You don't need Hare Krishna. But all we need is the blood of Jesus. That's all we need is the blood of Jesus in our life. We've come too far to turn back. We've come too far to look back behind us. But Lord, we're looking ahead to what you have in store for your people. And that is heaven. 
That's the new kingdom. And God, we welcome you in this place. Build and counter your love, your love surrounds us. We will flow in this place. Fill your hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. How many's glad that the love of God surrounds us? Can you feel that love this morning? Would you give God a hand clap of praise if you feel that love in this place? Hallelujah. Turn to three people and tell them that you're, you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. glad to be in the house of the Lord? If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, would you give God another shout of praise? Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Let me uh, first do this real quick. Um, Let's take up our tithes and offerings real quick. How many in here have been blessed by God? And I don't know about you, but I've always been told, my dad always told me, he said, son, you can never outgive God. And I have to tell you that I found that to be true. Not only am I giving, but I have found it to be where if I give myself to God, that He does something for me. He either heals me or whatever the case may be, He does that. I can't not give Him. The more I give, the more He gives me. Amen? How many is glad that God is a giving God? If you're here for the first time, I want you to, there's a, a, a connection card in your seat in front of you. If not, somebody will get one to you. Fill that out real quick and drop it in our, in our offering bag. So that way we can contact you and say we're glad to have you here. Amen. Ushers, if you would go ahead and if you come, we're going to give today as the Lord has given us. I have to tell you that I love, go ahead, Ushers, go ahead, come on up. I love to be able to use all people in the kingdom of God because there is no other way but God. Amen? But if you have your tithes and your offering this morning, we're going to give to God what he has given us back. Amen? Would you stand? Let's go ahead and just get ready to receive. I know this is kind of, Pastor, why are you making a stand? Because I, I really feel today that we need to, to stand and say, here, God, here it is. Not only am I giving of my money, but God, I'm giving of myself. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you today that you have given us more than we can even ask or think. You've given us, God, our time. You've given us money. You've given us our health. God, you've given us so many different things. Our families. But Father God, we here today, God, we worship you in our giving today. God, this is a, just another form of worship that we worship you with. Now, Father, I pray, God, that you would bless every hand that you have given today. Multiply it, Father.
Father God, in the power and the name of Jesus. And God, we give you all praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. Would you give God a hand clap of praise as the ushers come and receive the offering today? We're putting our kids to use. Amen? We're putting our young people to use. Why? Because they're the church of today. Amen? Not the church of tomorrow, but the church of today. And they need to know how to serve in the, in the Lord's house. Amen? It is a, with a honor today, before I preach, to uh, dedicate my grandson. And uh, <clears throat> if I can do it without crying, I might, I, might, I might be able to do it. Because uh, anybody who's been around me and this little fella, I can't do nothing but love and eat on him all, every chance I can get. Amen. Angel, would you come and would you stand beside me here in just a few moments as they're bring, get ready to bring in uh, little Hunty? Meemaw, would you go ahead and come up here too? Because you're part of this. Uh, she's our patriarch of our family. Huh? Matriarch. But what did I say? Well, one of the. She's a state. She's our foundation to this family. Let me just tell you something about this woman that's coming up here, this little pink, beautiful blouse. If it wasn't for this woman right there, I would have never met this beautiful wife of mine. I'll never forget the night that uh, she was praying for Angel. And I was praying with her. And her and I both shouted across the plat uh, front of the church because uh, we knew that God had a, his hand on Angel. Amen. Chris, you need to get down here, son. Tina, you need to come down here, too. You're, you're an aunt. What are you doing sitting back there? It looks like you ain't got nothing to do. Tiffany, would you, would you get hold of uh, Hunty? Would you hold him? Where's Jeffrey? Where's Gracie? I need Jeffrey up here too. First, I need you guys, Chris and Tiff, I need you guys to face me. This little fella came into our lives and he is an awesome little guy he's being shy today that's unusual as they're getting ready to get Hunter uh, Jeffrey where did Matt and Norfolk go they're supposed to stand up here too yeah where did Norfolk go oh okay do you mind if I do this real quick I mean just indulge us for a moment. We've been—I've been waiting to do this for a year or so. Come up here, Hunty or Jeffrey. Listen, you don't know how many times I do that. I got the Papa brain. Hunty, come, uh, Jeffrey, come up here and stand beside Mom and Daddy and Gracie and Hunty. Choose on the elephant's trunk. First, I want to say this. Children are a gift from God. Psalms 127.3 proclaims, Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children, a reward to, from them. Or from him, excuse me. As believers, we are called to recognize children belonging first and foremost to God. God, is the, God in His goodness gives children as gifts to parents. They not only have an awesome responsibility of caring for this gift, but they also have an awesome privilege of enjoying the gift. Because children belong to God and are given by God as gifts to parents. It is a only proper and, a, and appropriate that children are dedicated back to God. 
We are told in 1 Samuel 1 that Hannah presented her son uh, Samuel to the Lord in Luke. And in Luke 2.22, we read Mary and Joseph brought their baby Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in order to present him before the Lord in the same way Chris and Tiffany today bring their son Hunter, Ray Hicks, presenting first themselves and then their son before the Lord, our God. Accompanying them in making this commitment of Hunter Ray is their godparents, Matthew and Norca Prestige. And in this, as a wit as witness as well, are the grandparent, Marie Music Sharver, great grandparent, and great aunt. She is a great aunt. <laughs> Tina. And the grandmother, Angel, and proud papa right here. Chris and Tiffany. I call your attention to the commands of, of God recorded in the Holy Scripture. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7 tells us, O oh, hear, Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts and press them on their children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. God. That's God's plan. Chris and Tiffany, love God with every ounce of your fiber and energy and teach Hunter to be the same. As you love God and <clears throat> love uh, one another, Grace and Jeffrey, you will model before Hunter a wonderful love for God wonderful lo love for God that he will want for himself. Chris and Tiffany, by coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves, your son, Hunter Ray Hicks, to the Lord? If so, would you please respond by saying we do. Having come freely, I ask you now to enter into the following commitment in the presence of the Lord and His people. <laughs> you have to switch it back and forth. Would you hand Hunter back to Chris? So the Hunter may walk in the abundant life of Christ. As handing him over to Chris, you're saying that you're relinquishing to the authority of the God, let uh, the headship of the house, Chris. So that Hunter may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. To you, Chris and Tiffany. up. Do you, you've already said you do. That you would raise this child up for God. Dorka, Matt, will you also help Tiffany and Chris to train this fine young man to be a godly
godly man. Would you respect and guide and love and help along the way so that Chris and Tiffany can teach this young man, Hunter Ray, to be a godly man? Will you answer we will? Chris and Tiffany, of raising Hunter in the fear of the Lord, to uphold them in prayer with everything that should happen, should anything should happen, Chris and Tiffany. There's, there's family, and you, you will know that you've got people taking care of them. Now, congregation, I would you like for you to stand. <clears throat> Chris and Tiffany, I want you, everyone, to turn to the congregation. Finally, I ask you, the church, make a vow as well. There's an old proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. Parents have the first responsibility, but parents need help and support from their community, which is the church. So I direct my question now to you, the body. By being present in the, in the Lord's house today, do you hereby declare yourselves to be the children of God because you trust in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of sin and the gift of eternal life? If this is true, would you please respond by saying, we do. Would you please have, let me have Hunter. Everybody, this is my heart right here, along with these other two that's standing down here. And would you give me the boil? It's by the, by the preacher. Would you, as a church, would you stretch your hands this way? Let's pray. we ask you today, Lord, that you would keep your hand on him, that no harm will come to him, that, Lord, that he will walk in the fullness of your word, that you would touch and guide him through all troubles, knowing that you are the only answer to all things. And, Father, as we hand him back to you today, God, I give you praise glory, and I give you honor for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to do this today, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Let's give God a hand up for this. We have given, we have a gift. I gotta, I gotta tell you, uh, our grandkids love Nana and Papa, if you can't tell that already. So, with all this said, can we give God another hand clap of praise for the presence of God in this place? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Thank you for allowing me to, to take that opportunity real quick. They want to know if you're going to class. They're going to class, by the way. Yes. They don't have to sit and listen to Papa. And who wants to do that? I mean, really. Amen. We're going to continue it today.
today uh, on our series, uh, Make Your Move. And this is the third part to our series, uh, Make Your Move. And this is, uh, last week was, it was, uh, the first week we talked about um, letting God move in. Let the Spirit of God move in. The second one was, let the pastor move over. Today is let the laity, the people of God, move up. Amen? So how many realize that ministry is not a special office? Remember last week we talked about the offices of, of the church and how there's prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists, and all these things. That, but how many knows that the ministry is not a, a particular office? Amen? Say ministry is a special function of the church. And ministry, is, uh, in many acts, uh, is a service given in Jesus' name. Amen? So, I want, let me ask you this quick question today. What do you think the biggest sin in church is today? And I guarantee you, most of you would probably get it wrong, and I got it wrong when I was thinking about this myself. The biggest sin in the church today is the lack of people leading and doing the work of the ministry. Pastor, how can that be? Well, we're going to dig into that here in just a few moments. But you see, we've got, got it all wrong when it comes to ministry. We think that ministry is that something that the pastor does at church. We've talked about this last week. We talked about how, how uh, it's not biblical that the pastor do all the, all the work of the church. It's part of the laity's job. But because ministry is not a special office, the word ministry is never mentioned in the Bible. Did you realize that? That ministry is not mentioned not one time in the Bible. But at least, it's not, it's, it's, it's not like the, the ordained pastor's position or the ordained minister's position. It's not a profession. At its heart, ministry is a special function, a function that everybody has the opportunity to participate in and act upon and according to the gifts that God has given us. So really, ministry is anything, any act of service in giving in Jesus' name. So let me just give you a little quiz real quick. If you had the gift of hospitality, you would most likely be working at the front door greeting people as you come in. That's uh, called a greeter. How many knows we need those in the church world today. That's a ministry. Or is it a ministry? Yes or no? Yes, it is. It is a ministry. Okay, let me ask you this question. It's a wonderful ministry, for that matter. Just to let you know. How many things helping in the nursery, rocking and taking care of babies and even uh, watching after their safety and security and even changing diapers in the name of Jesus. Is that a ministry? Sure it is. See, you see, we tend to make ministry something high and mystical and un 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 unattainable. But sometimes, uh, the most of us think that ministry is uh, something that is done by someone else of a licensed ministry. But see, ministry is just using your gifts for the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Amen? So every one of us in this room have a gift that God has given us. Whether we realize it or not, every one of us have a gift. So one of, every one of our gifts need to be working in the ministry of God. Amen? As you see why we should uh, consecrate our gifts to God. We need to, to give our very best to God. You see, that's a, that's a word we don't see very often or hear about very often, the word cons uh, consecration, because that's a real old churchy, churchy term. Amen? We've heard those terms before, but it means to dedicate of service. And how many knows we need to be dedicated to the service of God? Amen? So every one of us are called, ourselves Christians, should be dedicated in using the gifts of ministry to God. So why is every Christian should use their gifts for ministry? Well, God expects us to. You realize that? That God expects us to use that for the ministry? First, every Christian should use their gifts because it's expected of God wants you to. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. And then we're going to skip down to verses 9 and 10. Would you please stand for the reading of God's Word? 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 5 and 9 through 10. When you have it, would you say amen? 
As you come to him, the living stones rejected by men, by chosen by God, and precious to him. Let me just stop right there and let me go back and read that again. As you come to him, the living stone. Who's that living stone? That's Jesus. Rejected by men, but chosen by God, and is precious to God. Did you know that Jesus is precious to God? You also, like living stones, are being built into the spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you, not verse 9, but you are, are a chosen people. Turn to somebody and say, you're chosen. You're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and how many glad he's called you out of darkness out of darkness into this wonderful light once you were, were not a people but now you are people of God once you have had not received mercy but now you have received mercy let us pray Father we thank you today for your word we thank you that your word is forever established in heaven and earth. We thank you today, God, that you have caused your word to be a living word. And Father, we just ask you today, God, that you anoint me from the top of my head to the very soles of my feet. Lord, let nothing come past my lips, Father God, that's not pleasing unto you. God, make every word that is said today, God, a helpful word. God, a word that we can take and we can use, Father God, for the kingdom work. And Father, we just thank you today for your presence that we feel in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. Did you hear the titles that Peter uses to describe you? Did you hear that? He called you living stones. See, we're part of God's never-ending construction project. How many how, how many's been driving up and down uh, 75 lately? all the construction, you think they'll never get it finished. Amen? And one day, they're, they're gone from one area because you think you know that they're finished because they're no longer there and everything's back to normal. But you go down another 100 yards or another 20 miles and there's another construction site. There's another construction area because there's continually working. See, God is continually working on you whether you think he is or is not. He is continually working on you. There was a song that we used to sing as a kid, God's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Amen? See, he's still working on me. He's still working on you. Can I say amen? See, we're part of this, of this thing called the body of Christ. We are, to be, we are to help build the body of Jesus Christ. Who is that? That's the body of Jesus. That's the body. Of, that's the church. Amen. See, we are help. We are to help build the kingdom of God, not the church of God. Amen. See, we're here to build the kingdom of God. See, if we get people saved, it doesn't matter if they come here or not. But we need to get them plugged into a church where they can grow. Why, Pastor? We're supposed to build up our church. No, we're not supposed. God's never called us to build a a a, a, a big church. He's never called us to to be uh, a Joe Olstein church. Thank God. Amen. But He's called us to be the church to build the kingdom of God. See, we're the church. Everybody say, look at your neighbor. And say, you're the church. So we need, to be, we need to be the ones that help build the kingdom of God. See, Jesus also described in the Bible as a chief cornerstone upon which the kingdom of God is built. And how many knows that he is that chief cornerstone? He is the very foundation that everything rests upon. You, I mean, how many, I, I don't know much about construction, but I do know this, that if you don't have a, a good foundation, the house is not going to uh, sit well. Come on. So if, if we don't have a good foundation, if we don't have a good cornerstone, if we don't have something to, to hold the walls in place, they're not going to stand in place. Amen? So if we all are part of this building process. We're continually building the kingdom because God has called us to do that. Amen? See, we are all part of a plan in building the kingdom of God. Why? Because we're called holy priests. Not only 
where we call living stones, but he's called us to be a holy priest. What is a priest? Someone who offers something to God. How many come here today to offer something to God? Pastor, I don't, what, what do you mean to offer something to God? Well, did you not come to offer your praise to Him? Did you not come today to offer yourself to Him? So if you come today to offer yourself and you come to, to offer uh, your praise, then, you come, then you're a holy priest. Come on. See, in the Old Testament, uh, they, 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 the priest took him and brought in animals to sacrifice animals. But in the New Testament, God's called us to be a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to Him. Come on. See, as lay priests, we are offering ourselves, consecrating our lives, our talents, our gifts, our future, everything to God, right? So when, we, when Peter says that we are holy priest, it means that we give ourselves completely to Him. So when's the last time you gave yourself completely to Him? See, we're supposed to give ourselves completely to Him on a daily basis. Amen? Don't we, aren't we supposed to praise Him in the morning? Praise Him at noon time? I think there used to be a song like that years ago. Praise Him all day long. Why? Because he's been good to us. Look what the Lord has done. He touched my mind. He touched my body. Amen? How do you, thought, how do you think you got up this morning? It wasn't by your own will. How many glad that you have legs that you can swing over the side of the bed and stand up on your own on two feet? So, do you go... You've got something to give God praise for. How many's had somebody in your family had cancer and you've been praying that for that person and all of a sudden they no longer have cancer? Do you stop praising him just because of that one incident? No, you praise him all the time. Thank you, Lord, that I still have my brother. Thank you, Lord, I still have my mother. Thank you for my aunt who had cancer but no longer has cancer. Why? Because we have to give God praise for everything he does. And if we and when we stop praising him, then there's something wrong. Amen? See, not only has he called us living stones, not only has he called us holy priest, but he's also called us a chosen race or a chosen people. I love this verse. Because it comes to my mind how awesome it is that God chose us. He chose you to use you, to choose me, to use me. He chose me. Amen? Because of his great love and mercy and grace, God has chosen the unchoosable. I don't know if that's even a word. He, 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 he chose the, the unlikely people to do the work of his hand. Amen? Amen? We all, know that we all know in the Bible that the Bible tells us that the Jewish people are God's people, but uh, and the Gentiles were nothing but dogs compared to, to the Jews. So when God decided he's going to call the Gentile into the, fa uh, the family of God, he chose us. <laughs> I'm going to say this out loud. I don't know why. How many has ever thought, Lord, why did you why did why did you bring me in the midst of this family? How many's got some crazy family members? And you're thinking, my goodness, why in the world was I born into this crazy mess? Come on, somebody. Be, be honest, be honest, be honest. I, I thought the same thing. By blood. <laughs> oh, you the only reason why you said it's because Stephanie. <laughs> But how, how, how many knows that when you go to adopt somebody or you marry somebody, you choose that person? You choose to send your love and give your love to that person. Amen? So Jesus, seeing that we were without, come on, without a family, 
without a place to go. And he says, you know what? I'm going to send my love and my grace and my mercy to them because I love them. Come on, somebody. He chose us. We didn't choose him. He chose us. I'm going to save this group of people. Can I get an amen? See, Christ, Christ died for us. And how many is glad that he died for us? How many is glad that he, he shed his blood for us? See, he chose to die for, for us so we are able, because we were unable to be loved and un unwilling, to be, uh, uh, unwilling to be loved. We were rebellious. Come on. And sinful. But God chose us. Do you know that what, uh, what's, what even a greater feeling than that is knowing that God wanted me? He wanted you. Because he laid his life down for you. Remember John 3, 16? For God so loved the world. The world is unlovable. The world is in a mess. It's sinful. It's all these things. But God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He gave. His, can anybody give up their son or their child for the world? No, we couldn't. We wouldn't. But God said, I love this world enough that I'm going to give my only precious son. Come on. See, God, we're God's possession. See, we're God's property. We belong to him. Everything we have, everything that we are, belongs to him. For him to do with whatever he pleases. But I think a lot of times people forget that we have been bought with a price. He's the owner. He has given us stewardship over the life that we have. And he expects us to use those gifts and those things that he's given us for his glory. See, the titles that Peter uses in Scripture rises all believers to the, the status of ministers. But see, spiritually, or spiritual growth will never happen unless we use our gifts. So what is your gift? What, what has God given you? Some he's given to sing. Some he's given to play music. Some he's given to, uh, the, uh, the ability to, to, uh, to do administration work. Some he's given some to do gardening. Some, but whatever it is that God has placed and given to you, write poems, whatever it is, whatever God has given to you, you do it for the glory of God. Amen? See, we all need our, to hear this loud and clear this morning. We will never grow spiritually like we need to unless we start using the spiritual gifts God has given us. We won't grow. Period. End of the story. Because you see, a lot of Christians think that they're, they're something like a Christmas ornament. You know, sparkly and looking good and out for display for everyone to see. How many's been to Walmart lately? They already got the Christmas stuff up. Makes me want to bark. We even got Thanksgiving here yet. We even got Halloween here yet. We're, we're, we already got Christmas music playing on television and Christmas uh, Christmas movies and all this stuff. And I'm sitting here scratching my head going, did we, did we skip some weeks or something here? Because I'm surely had, did I sleep way too long or something? I don't know what, what's happening. But it seems like every year they want to they want to push it down our our, our our face and our throat. But how many's walked down the ornament aisle? You know they're all sparkly and clean, and uh, they're hanging on the, uh, the the wall. They're like, "Buy me, buy me, I'm pretty." Well, some Christians are that same way. They look good. They're on display, but when it comes down to it, they have no power whatsoever. Remember last week when I showed you that decorated net? It looks good. It looks like it could do the job. But the holes are too big and there's a big hole in it. But if you hang it just right, it looks wonderful. Come on, somebody. 
if you hang it just in, in, a, in a certain way to, to not to mask the, the, the big hole that's in it, it looks like a net that you can throw out in the water and catch fish, knowing that it has no power to do so. I love this in Romans 12, 6 through 8. I want, I want you to turn there. But while you're turning there, I want to tell you this. See, but some people just think by coming to service and getting fed is their, uh, their due service. Or at least it's what they think. They can become spiritually dead. We need to spiritually exercise our, our gifts that God has given us, and we need to uh, spiritually exercise our walk with God. We need to build some spiritual muscle. See, listen, the devil will, the devil will fight a, spirit, a, 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 a weak Christian more so than he would somebody who's got some strong faith. Come on, somebody. He, he, he will still fight you, but he knows that because your faith and because your muscles and your spiritual life are so strong that he has no chance, and he knows it. Come on, somebody. Look at Romans 12, 6 through 8. It says this. We have different gifts according to the uh, grace God has given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in this portion of his faith. If it is his uh, serving, let him serve. If, if it is teaching, let him teach. But if it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is distributing the, need, uh, the, uh, the needs to others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern vigilantly. If it is showing mercy, let him be cheerful. See, success is only promised if every Christian has a ministry. Come on. Listen now. When I when I came to came here, everybody said we want our church to grow. We want uh, we want uh, we want everybody wants to see it grow. Everybody, you know, every, we want to see we want to have a revival. Oh yeah, we want to see it. We want to see revival. We want we want to reach the lost. But can I just say, be honest with you, this morning every church says that. Every church says it. Every church says it, but very few pay the price it takes to make it happen. Thank you. As soon as things start getting rough and a little bit uncomfortable, people start falling off. As soon as the waters start getting a little choppy and people start abandoning ship, You see, we know how to talk the talk, but very seldom do we really walk the walk to make our just our church successful. If you want to, if you want to call me, my telephone number is eight five zero eight seven nine seven one five four. My email address is pastorraycog at aol.com. I'll be glad to tell you. If you want to get mad at me, you need to get in the book. Because, listen, the field is ripe unto harvest. Jesus said, but where are the laborers? Where are those who are willing to work in the field? I used to sing a song about that years ago. My house is full, but my fields are empty. There's plenty of room at the table. There's plenty of food there. And everybody's sitting there, but the, the field is completely empty. People are just waiting for somebody to say, would you like to come to church with me? This is, where, this is really where the rubber meets the road. See, success for us as a church is, is, is only possible if every Christian has a ministry to do. See, needs will never be met without ministry. How do you, where do you get that from, Pastor? Well, again, get in the book, Acts chapter 6. If the lay people of the body of Christ don't do the ministry, so many needs will never be met. So do you realize that in Acts chapter 6, the, the widows were being neglected and things were not getting done and 
<laughs> the people started complaining. But when the lay people started stepping into the position of ministry to do the work of the church, so the pastor could get alone with God and hear from God. That's when the church began to grow. Things began to change. So that means lay ministry is important to the church. That's the reason why we're all that's the reason why I'm asking you to step up. Not for me. Listen, you're not doing it for me. You're doing it for God. And if you're not willing to do it for God, then why won't you? See, there's people who need to be visited. There's people who need to be called. And there's some that need to be prayed for. Well, Pastor, that's what you get paid for. No, it's not. My job is to govern the church to make sure the body is moving and doing what it's supposed to and praying and seeking after God for the direction that he wants this church to go. Have you, how many ever seen a boat captain do all the work on the boat and the, the ship is uh, sailing off into just anywhere? No, you never see that. Why? How many ever been in the military? When you were in the military, your general didn't tell you, oh, we're just going to just fly by the seat of our pants and see what happens. No, there had to be somebody at top looking down and saying, okay, we need this person over here. We need this person over here. Y'all need to be doing your job over here. Listen, it happens in the workplace. Guess what happens when you don't work in the, at work? You don't get paid. Right? Pastor, you're, you're sounding awful harsh. Please, I'm not trying to be harsh this morning. I'm trying to help us to reach our level where God wants us to be. See, we can't stay at this level anymore. We've got to move up. We've got to move beyond where we once were so we could do what God's called us to. See, if we're still down here playing along, playing the sandbox and everything, kumbaya, Jesus, you know, come by here and all this stuff, guess what's going to happen? People are going to pass this up and they're going to be going, what happened to that church? What's, what's happened? Because nobody wants to do the work. They want to have fun. Amen? Listen, anybody who's been around me long enough knows I'm a person who likes to have fun. Amen? See, God is limited without, without ministry commitment. Pastor, God has no limits. Well, I have to tell you, there is some limits that God has that causes the people, Him to be limited you know, did you realize that there are ways to that? He has chosen to reveal his love and humanity through us, his church. And if we don't do that, he's limited. If we do the ministry, then he can minister through us. Come on. But if we don't do the ministry, then God is limited in ministering to the people because he wants, he's waiting on us to do the work. See, the church is incomplete without someone getting, get using their gifts. The church will never be whole unless everybody uses the gifts. I love First Corinthians chapter twelve. Paul talks about the fact that the body has many parts, and you can read that for yourself. But there's a lot of things that function in the body, and you can't have one without the other. Amen. How many's ever taken a watch apart and take one one of the uh, the gears out of there? Once you take one of the gears out of there, the watch quits working, stops working. Amen. It takes every intricate part that makes the watch move. It takes every gear to make that little hand go around. Come on, somebody. See, every Christian has gifts and is expected to use it. First Peter four and ten, uh, four ten through eleven tells us that. Our spiritual gifts are a special attribute that God has given every minister. Amen? Using, using your gifts glorifies God. Did you realize that? Now, using your gifts displeases God. How many wants to please God? Everybody in this building wants to please God. Listen, God 
inhabits the very praises of his people. Am I right? Isn't that what his scripture says? So if, if we want to please God, then why don't we want to please him with everything that we have? Amen? There's another passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 25 this morning that talks about, Jesus tells a story about the parable of the talents. You probably heard it as well as, you know as well as I do, this guy who had the talent did not use his talents. And the master was greatly disappointed. You see, God gives different gifts to different people and expects them to use them. Amen? See, he rewards us if we use it. If we don't, he's disappointed in us. And I don't know about you, but I'd never want to be disappointed to disappoint God. See, no gift, no matter how small it seems. Pastor, I can't do much. I'm limited. God is just asking you, asking for your ability, your willingness. Amen? If I can get some music. I'm going to give you an illustration if I can. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, we're, we're getting ready to head into our Christmas season full force. And pretty soon, grandparents and parents will be buying Christmas presents like crazy. But you know how fun it is to buy gifts and for your kids, your grandkids, and you wrap them all up and you put them under the tree and you just can't wait for Christmas time to get here. But how would it feel at Christmas morning if your kids came in to the room where the Christmas tree was and, but instead of being excited and tearing open those gifts... All they did was look at them and never said nothing. No thanks. And never bothering to open them. How would it make you feel? Hey, listen, church. Do you, how do you think God feels when he has offered us gift after gift after gift, hoping that will be open at least one of them and willing to use them instead of keeping them in the package and sliding them up underneath our beds and hiding them. See, Christians have so many gifts that God has given. But when are you going to open them? Using your gift is for ministry ministers to God. Did you know that? When you use your gifts that God has given you, you minister to God. Matthew 25, 34 through 40 says this. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you visited me. Or invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came and visited me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty, or, or give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invited you in, or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and to go and visit you? The king. Jesus will reply, I will tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. See, that verse 
is the basis for so much of what we here at Citrus Rings Church want to do. But the principle that in this verse isn't the limit to one form of ministry. It is a promise for everyone who uses their gifts for the kingdom of God. How many remembers Mother Teresa? She wrote a book called The Gift from God. If there's anybody been or whoever was living embodiment of this passage of scripture, that was Mother Teresa. I want you to listen to what she wrote in her book. It says this. We all long for heaven where God is, but we have we have it in our we have it in our power to be in heaven with him right now. To be happy with him at his very at this very moment. For being happy in his presence means loving as he loves. Helping as he helps. Giving as he gives. Serving as he serves. Rescuing as he rescues. And being with him for all the 24 hours. Because he touches them. Because we touch him. When we touch others. Everybody stand. Listen, you may, not have, you may not believe that you have the ability, the time, or the talent to serve in the kingdom of, of Jesus. But don't ever forget, it doesn't matter if you believe in yourself because God believes in you already. That's all that matters. This is what I want us to do. They're going to sing. And I'm going to, I want to pray. And if you feel like you want to come this morning and say, God, show me my gift. Some of you may not even know what your gift is. But come and ask God. Get in the altars and find out and ask God, God, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to do to serve you in this place, in this place of worship? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that you give me the opportunity to share the greatest people in the world about how you believe in us so much that you let us use the gifts you've given us for your glory. Lord, the thing I ask more than anything about Citrus Springs Church is that we truly will be the church where people is a minister, and every minister is using their gifts for your glory. Help us, Holy Spirit, to respond to your call on our lives. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. They're going to sing. And if you feel like God is drawing you to the altar to pray to find your gift, you, don't, you may not even want to come to the altar. You don't have to. That's, that's totally up to you. But you can pray right where you're at and say, God, I surrender myself, but Lord, show me what you want me to do for the kingdom. Would you do that while they sing? Let's do that. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide. Good. 
Father, we just thank you today. God, I pray that every person in the sound of my voice today, God, has reached out to you to find the gift in the area, Father God, that you would want them to be. Lord, I give you praise right now, God, for talking to your people, for showing your people in advance. God, we give you glory and honor and praise for all things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated for just a few moments. Real quick, let me make some announcements real quick. Tonight at 6.30, Cherish, it's a marriage uh, enrichment. Tonight at 6.30 here at the church. Don't forget to be here. See uh, for more details, see Pastor Chris. Pastor Chris, would you just raise your hand and wave at everybody? If you want to know more about that, would you see him? Also, don't forget, this Saturday from 5 to 8 is our Harvest Fest. Uh, we have uh, gotten candy in. We're going to be starting bagging that this week. We still need to be buying the hot dogs and the hot dog buns this week, so if you are able to uh, give towards that, please let us know. Um, if you can come and help in any way possible, let us know. Just uh, Because there's games that we need to be manning, and there's other things that need to be done, so please uh, let me know what you can do. Uh, we're going to be here all week long trying to get things ready. If you want to come and help put games together, uh, men games, whatever the case is, just let us know. We would love to have you come and help us do any in any shape and form. Amen? Uh, is there anything else? You want to say, talk about that? missing all right let's everybody stand sister Kay would you come dismiss us in prayer thank you Lord thank you for another beautiful day in your house thank you for our brothers and sisters who came to worship with us Lord thank you for your word today let us hide it in our hearts let us take it with us this week we just thank you for your presence we thank you for your sweet son Jesus and it's in his name we pray amen